just want to let you know that you will probably have to pause the video um, at spots because the audio crashed while I was doing the analyze graph piece. So if you have to pause it, pause it so that you can get everything down. This is a video for the retake of the test of section 24228. And this, this particular test is usually one of the, the highest scoring tests for students in first semester. And that's because there are a limited amount of topics and the review is so close to what we have on the test that normally students do very, very well. And if you didn't, here's what you have to ask yourself. Am I one of the students who has not been completing my homework every single day? Am I one of the students who has not been watching the lessons every single day? Because we know that in math, math is a building process, and so you need to take one lesson Monday through Friday, watch that lesson, do the homework to get that into your long-term memory. So the first issue for some of you would be, and again, that's some of you, would be procrastination. I realize that some of you, are you just want a higher score because you made a little mistake, and, and you're aware of that. But those of you that are retaking this because you submitted five assignments at once, you've got nobody to blame but yourself for this test score. Um, it was absolutely ridiculous in some cases. It was like you didn't even watch the videos for the lessons. So I don't know how you expect to be successful when you're not doing that. You're not spending enough time on the assignments, um, in fact, I would guess you maybe copied down the review instead of doing it because um, the scores for some people were, they just reflected no work at all, no no doing anything that you had been taught to do during this this uh, particular um, group of sections here, 2-4 to 2-8. Again, for those of you that are just looking to get a little bit higher score because you messed up on one, sorry you had to sit through that, but um, it needs to become really obvious to people at this point that there is a way to learn math that uh, produces successful results and some people are not following that. So. Uh, reminder, if you didn't have all the homework in for sections 2, 4 through 2, 8, uh, you just heard me talking about this for no reason because you will not be eligible for the retake and you can stop the video and go back to whatever you were doing. Uh, number one is, again, watch the video, take notes of everything, make sure you show all the work, write down the problems as I go through them, write down the steps as you go through them, all of those things. Anything that you write down in addition to hearing it helps your long-term memory. Number two, go back in the notes, highlight the problems that are similar to the test problems. Number three, redo the review assignment. Take your time, make sure you understand those concepts. And um, I believe this one we had two days of review. So for the retake, you will want to do the second one. We try to keep the, the second assignment as the one that is closest to what you will see on the test. Again, as you do that, you're going to see, oh my gosh, this was exactly the test, but with different problems on it. So um, you, you have to spend more time on that. Then uh, make me a little video where you are uh, showing me by January 12th at 2.45, so end of the school day on January 12th, that you have all of those things completed. Um, no exceptions in the video. Make sure you flip through all of the above work and show it to me. I think the longest video anybody's ever had to send me is about two minutes. So um, flip through it and, and show me that you've done everything and I'll check to see that everything has been completed. And then we will talk about opening up the test for you. Uh, the deadline for the retake is January 13th at 1.45 p.m. That ensures that you'll be done by, done with the test by 2.45, which is the end of the school day. Again, no exceptions anymore. Um, some of you, this is, is several tests that you've had to retake. You know the process and I shouldn't keep having having to push back deadlines, um, so I'm not going to do that anymore. Make sure that you meet these deadlines or the answer will be no for the retake. Now, the first two problems on the test were the obvious, uh, you know, are you, are you going to behave yourself and not cheat and all of those good things. So it was problem three was the first one that you had to do some work on. And it says that given negative three plus i is a zero of the polynomial function, you should stop right there and say to yourself, well, that tells me 
negative 3 minus i is also a zero of the polynomial function because any irrational zeros and imaginary zeros always come in pairs. And then we have this nice long polynomial right here, and it says find the remaining zeros. So as we talked about in class, you want to do synthetic with these two, but you probably want to start with negative 3 plus i because the most work synthetically comes with the first round of synthetic division that you do. So um, take a look at it. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. They're all there. It's in standard form. And yes, you definitely want to give yourself some more space when we're having to do division with our imaginary zeros. All right, so we get started. We bring down the 1. And we realize we have to take that times negative 3 plus i, and that will give us negative 3 plus i. And then we add, and we get an i, which is not so bad. And some of you, I know, probably didn't show work for this step. But because some people got these wrong, I want to go ahead and show you each of those steps. So we distribute the i and get negative 3i plus i squared, and realize, of course, that i squared is negative 1. So we have negative 1 minus 3i which doesn't make us happy when we get to this next one because we'll add that and we'll have negative 19 minus 3i. So now we have to take negative 19 minus 3i times the quantity negative 3 plus i and see what we get. And that comes out to Now, I'm not necessarily writing that down in the right order there, but we've got 57 plus 9i minus 19i minus 3i squared by doing FOIL um, or just distributing. And when we go ahead and multiply those two together, we get a result of 57 plus 3 because this i squared in the back here is negative 1, so 60. And then plus 9i minus 19i is minus 10i. And we bring our 60 minus 10i into position, and we would get um, negative 30 minus 10i. And we go again. So we're going to need our negative 3 plus i times negative 30 minus 10i, which we're really hopeful comes out to 100 so that we can get our 0. And that would give us 90 plus 30i minus 30i minus 10i squared, which would, of course, make that plus 10. So we have 90 plus 10 is 100. And hopefully you notice that the plus 30i and the minus 30i cancel out. That's perfect because that is exactly what we needed. We needed a 100. And when we add those, we get a zero, which they told us, you know, we're supposed to get zeros for this. And then we know that because they came in pairs, we have to do this again with negative 3 minus i. And so we also know that the second time through goes a lot faster and easier, so we might not even have to show any work for this part. Bring the 1 down and multiply by negative 3 minus i, and we'll get negative 3 minus i plus i, which is negative 3. Then we could distribute that negative 3 to negative 3 minus i and get 9 plus 3i, and that would give us a negative 10 because negative 19 plus 9 will give us negative 10. And then we distribute again, and we get 30 plus 10i, which again is beautiful, because we get a 0. And at this point, I want to stop because there were a few students that couldn't get any farther than this because they didn't get the synthetic to work out for these two. And I, I know you really struggled with that because you wrote me little notes on your paper. Um, and what I'm thankful for is you didn't just sit there and keep struggling. You know, there's more to the test. So um, one problem, yeah, it, it's, it's eight points, so it, it's going to hurt you. But if you can't get it to work, um, go on and do the rest of the test and then try to come uh, back to it. 
But in this case, because we have to take these on Schoology, um, you're not allowed to work back and, and get to this. So you, you did the right thing. You know, you, you went ahead and, and finished the rest of the test. So now what we have to say is, what do we have left? And the reminder is always that this isn't about what the calculator does. This is what you do mathematically, which means algebra. So remainder constant x, x squared. We have x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. And it doesn't have a greatest common monomial factor. And it is not a perfect square trinomial. But we look at it and say, hey, are there two numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add to negative 3? And that's going to be negative 5 and positive 2. So our last two zeros are at 5 and negative 2. And given that this was a quartic, an x to the fourth up there, we have found them all. So writing them down, we know that f of negative 3 plus i is a 0. f of negative 3 minus i is a 0. f of 5 is a 0. And f of negative 2 is a 0. So for some people, it was just you, you got so caught up in um, the imaginary not working for you there, one number off, and, and it just threw you. And that does happen with this test. So you just have to be extra slow and careful for this problem, and then you can you know, go a little bit faster on something else to make your way through it. Number four, um, this one is find a polynomial function of least degree with the zeros of the square root of 3 and 2 minus 3i. This was one of them where I knew that some of you had not watched the lessons, and that's because these were the only zeros you wrote down, or you only wrote down one pair instead of both pairs. Square root of 3 is irrational, so the negative square root of 3 is also going to be a 0. They don't have to give us that. We're supposed to know that. 2 minus 3i those come in conjugate pairs. So 2 plus 3i will also be there. Now, it did say a polynomial function, so we need an f of x. And we can do x minus the square root of 3, x plus the square root of 3, of course, remembering that those two will be easiest to do together. And then x minus 2 minus 3i and x minus 2 plus 3i. So big deals here. We have to remember to group these appropriately. And these front two will group very nicely. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that in this step as I work with uh, distributing the negative in the back. So first times first will be x squared. Outside times outside, inside times inside are going to cancel out because this is a sum and difference formula. There's your sum. There's your difference. So it will be minus the square root of 9 which is 3, and most people went right to that step. And then we have x minus 2 plus 3i and x minus 2 minus 3i. And while you're writing that down, you should be thinking, oh, good, because now if I put parentheses around that x minus 2, um, this will be another sum and difference pattern because here's the plus and here's the minus. So my f of x equals x squared minus 3 just sits tight for a minute. And I know that I'm going to have to take x minus 2 squared, first times first here, and then last times last, and do a little extra work with that. So for most people, that meant writing out the x minus 2 twice and just doing FOIL, and then changing minus 9i squared to plus 9. f of x equals our quantity x squared minus 3 times x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 9. Let me scroll this down a little bit. And then we would go ahead and simplify. And now, last but not least, we want to carefully distribute the x squared to everything in the parentheses and carefully distribute the negative 3, because we've done all the hard work. So we have an x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 10x squared, because that's the one where we do have two like terms that we can put together there, 13x squared minus 3x squared, and then plus 12x 
minus 39, and voila, there it is. Again, you know, a basic plus minus mistake, something, a negative mistake, something early on is going to trounce you here. But what I try to do is just take off for that negative mistake and then um, follow the rest of your work and see if it worked out. But this one went very well for those that had been doing the assignments. Then number five. Number five is our big um, graph problem with, with all the analysis in it. And so I had to see the algebra here. When you use a calculator for this one, the only thing you should use it for is just getting a table so that you can get some nice numbers on there. And I did remind you at the beginning of the test that whenever you're making the tables, you should have at least three points in every table. And we had two branches here, so that would mean that you would have a total of six points at the very least, minimum, to graph this. But first things first, factor it so you can figure out where all of the easiest analyzed pieces are going to be. So numerator here um, does not have a greatest common monomial factor, but if we have x plus 4 times x minus 2, that will work since that negative 8 back there is pretty obviously not a perfect square. And then on the bottom, greatest common monomial factor. And at this point, we realize there are no holes in this graph. We don't have any factors of the numerator that match the factors in the denominator. So that's good. Then I also see I have x squared on the top, degree 2 polynomial. And on the bottom, my denominator is x to the first. So that means I should do the division so that I can figure out where that slant asymptote is. Now, as I talked to you about in class, it is better to stick with long division because those of you that switched this to synthetic, um, you made errors as you went through it. And I did not talk to you about how to do it that way, and then that's, in most cases, why that happened. So what we have to do is think, how can I get 3x plus 6? How can I get 3x to match x squared? And I'd have to take it times 1 third x to get that first term to match, because then that would give me the x squared plus 2x. Although what we're really inter interested in right there is just the fact that the x squareds match. It's always the first one. And then we change the signs and add. And 1 third x did its job, so that's going to go up there. And I just have a minus 8 down here, which would be the remainder. Now, I'm going to write it up here, but we didn't need it because slant asymptotes are the quotient of that division, never the remainder. So y equals 1 third x will be our slant asymptote. Now, let's start talking about filling in some of these blanks. So um, the vertical asymptote, those are going to be the zeros of the denominator that did not cancel out. So that's going to be x equals negative 2. Horizontal asymptotes, well, we don't have any because the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. We would see infinity squared over infinity, and when we cancel one out, we're still left with infinity. So none. The x-intercept comes from getting the y to equal 0. And the way that's going to happen is when the numerator is 0, because it's OK to have a 0 in the numerator, but not in the denominator. So that will be at negative 4, 0, and 2, 0. Y-intercept is what we get if we put zeros in for x. So 0, 0, 0, negative 8 divided by 6 would be negative 4 thirds. So not a lot of work to show for those two pieces. Slant asymptote, y equals 1 third x. Now, let's get all that good information on here. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. And we have a slant asymptote at 1 third x. So that'll start at 0, 0 and go up 1 and over 3. I'm going to do that several times here. And I think I will just leave that dotted. So we can see that. But you could, of course, you know, put the little um, hyphen-looking things in there, make that a dashed line. Totally up to you. Now, um, let's keep going with this. At this point, before you start filling out limits and everything else, you would probably want to grab your graphing calculator. And again, you want at least three points 
for each one of these branches. Um, I actually did four on one side and three on the other. Negative two, negative three, negative seven, negative one, and four fifths. And you could leave that negative 1.8 if you wanted to. Negative three, one, and two thirds. So the math I'm showing you here is if you were to literally do this by hand and, and put the numbers in. but. I'm just trying to pick some numbers here that will be really helpful for the graph of this. And then I had negative 1, negative 3, 6, 1 and 2 thirds, and 10, 3 and 1 ninth. And what you should notice is that for each of these branches, I went all the way out negative 10 and 10 because I wanted to see where is everything going. So. At negative 10, we're at negative 3, getting really close to that slant. All right, the audio crashed on the rest of this, so I'm going to talk you through everything after um, the asymptote. Went ahead and graphed this, and you can see with the fractions that I had there that I had done that by hand. But you certainly could have just put it into y equals with parentheses around the numerator, parentheses around the denominator, since it had more than one term in both of those, and then go ahead and graph it and hit second graph and give me to three decimal places because that's what we do in pre-calculus. Um, all of these lovely numbers here. But what you had to do was, was show everything that you knew about this graph, which meant going out to negative 10 and positive 10, showing that it was approaching your asymptotes. Um, limits at the vertical asymptote would be, uh, we can see that as we're approaching negative two from the left, we're going up forever, so that's infinity. And as we come in from the right, we're going down, so that's negative infinity. And some of you I know were not necessarily watching the full lessons because you didn't even have this notation correct for the vertical asymptotes. You have to watch the lessons daily and do the homework. Domain, only number we left out was negative two. That was our vertical asymptote. So negative infinity to negative two, union negative two to infinity. The range, we're going up and down forever. So negative infinity to infinity. Continuous over all x not equal to our vertical asymptote of negative two. It is increasing from left to right. It doesn't matter whether or not you're looking at, at this branch over here on the left or this one on the right. So negative infinity to negative two and then negative two to infinity. No symmetry, no boundedness, no local extrema. And our um, asymptotes, um, a few people had confused the fact that n behavior you know, works with the um, slant asymptote that we have. But that's not the limit. You don't ever use that, that slant asymptote as a limit. You say, well, where is it going to truly go if it approaches that asymptote and it's going down as we go to the left forever? And as we go to the right forever, it is going up. So we never put our slant asymptote in here for end behavior. Now, for number six, what you had to do was see that the third denominator here was not factored. That's x times the quantity x minus 3. And then your LCD would be x times the quantity x minus 3. And you would multiply all three of these by x times x minus 3. Then we'd go ahead and um, just do our, our normal, hey, let's distribute and move everything over. So x minus 3 cancels out and gives you 3x squared. And then we have grab a little pen here to work along with. And then we have the x canceling in these two positions. So we have negative 4 times quantity x minus 3. Here the x and the x minus 3s will cancel. And those, of course, would be just little 1s here. And that would give us 12. So we distribute the negative 4. And then we try to move everything over to one side. Since it's a quadratic, that usually means we try factoring first. And we notice, hey, look at that. We get a 0. So the only factoring we have to do is factoring out a greatest common monomial factor, which is the x. And then we find the two zeros, which are 0 and 4 thirds. But 0 cannot be in the denominator. So this one is extraneous. We can't use it. And 4 thirds ends up being the only solution. You could, of course, put this left side of your fraction in as y sub 1 and the right side is as y sub 2 and double check that if you had time with your graphing calculator. You'd see it only intersects at one spot, x equals 4 thirds. Number 7 says how much pure acid, so 100% and we don't know how much, added to, there it is, added to 50 mils of 20%, there's the 20%, and we want to produce a 55%, but we don't know how much yet. 
So let's change these percentages into decimals. This would be 1x plus 0.2 times 50, because we always move two decimal places, equals 0.55. And now we can see that these two together will make up the total amount of liquid, so x plus 50. Distribute the 0.55, subtract 0.55x from both sides, subtract 10 from both sides, and we get 0.45x equals 17.50, and we divide and get 38.889 milliliters. For number 8, what we want to do with this one is factor. So what we would do is say, hey, it has four terms. Let's go ahead and factor by grouping here. And when you do that, you see that factoring by grouping does indeed work. So we have an x squared minus 4 times x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. And then we'd factor this difference of two squares to x plus 2 and x minus 2. And then we have the x plus 4 still as one of the factors. So our zeros are going to be at negative 2, 2, and 4. And then we go ahead and put those on and make sure that you've got your little zero markers there because those are actual zeros. And then test something to the left of negative 5 in your factors, like neg left of negative 4, like negative 5 would give you a negative, negative 5 would give you a negative, negative 5 would give you a negative, and an odd number of negatives means negative. Something between negative 4 and negative 2, like negative 3. Well, negative negative, ooh, positive this time, and that's an even number of negatives, which is a positive. Between negative 2 and 2, put a 0 in. Positive, negative, positive, and that will produce a negative because it's an odd number of negatives again. And then anything to the right of 2, like 5. Positive, 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 so this will be positive. And we need to know when is this greater than or equal to 0, which means we're going to have to include negative 4, negative 2, and 2. So here's our positive piece from negative 4 to negative 2, including those two. And then from 2 to infinity, including that 2. So notice, there was no graphing calculator here. If you wrote me a little note, GC, and then showed me, no, you're not getting full points for that. You shouldn't have used a graphing calculator at all for this unless you wanted to check your answer. This is about algebra. It's not about your graphing calculator and what your graphing calculator can do. Number nine, same type of thing. You have to realize that the square root of x plus 7, x plus 7 is going to have to be greater than or equal to 0 in order for this to be a real number. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative 7. And at negative 7, negative 7 plus 7 would give you a 0. So there's our first 0. But anything below that on the number line is undefined. So we're not using that portion. And then you have your zeros for your denominator, which are negative 1 half and 6. But those are vertical asymptotes. They're not zeros, so don't put dots here. Then you go through and try to figure out your positives and negatives. Between negative 7 and negative 1 half, you could try something like negative 5. We'll have a positive, a negative, and a negative. And that has an even number of negatives, so that will be positive. Between negative 1 half and 6, 0 is a good choice. Positive, positive, negative. So odd number of negatives is negative. And then anything to the right of 6, well, let's put 7 in there. Positive, positive, positive. So that will be positive. And then it says a is the zeros. All right, well, that's going to be negative 7. So negative 7 is 0. And our undefined pieces, well, that's anything over here. So negative, inf negative infinity to negative 7, but don't include the negative 7. That was a 0. We also need the negative 1 half and the 6. You could write that as one number set. I took it as two as well. I think it was multiple choice anyway. And then for C, we want positive. Well, that's going to be from our negative 7 to negative 1 half, but not including those two because it's a 0 and it's undefined. And then 6 to infinity. And then for D, this one was going to be our negatives. And our negative interval is right here from negative 1 half to 6. So we definitely want that piece in there. And that finished off that problem. Again, being sure to show your sign chart. No graphing calculator business with that either. 10, find the value of k so that the given divisor d of x is a factor of p of x. Well, the remainder theorem tells us that if it's a factor, then the remainder is going to give you 0. So I've got my x minus 1 in the x minus a format, and that means a is 1. So if I put this 0 of 1 in for x, I'm supposed to get 0 as an answer. So you put the 1 in for the x's, and then you just simplify. 
1 to the 4th, 1 to the 3rd, 1 squared. It's all going to be 1. So 3 minus k plus 2 minus 3 plus 10. Then combine your like terms. Negative k plus 12. Subtract 12 from both sides and divide by a negative 1 and you get a k value of 12. Now, um, the, there's, there's no extra credit on the retake, so I just wanted to make sure that I showed you that. Some people did this with synthetic. Um, it's a little tougher to do that way, but yes, you can get it synthetically. So again, what you have to make sure you do is write down all of this good stuff that I just had here and um, take notes on all of that. Go back in the notes, highlight the problems similar to these test problems, redo the review assignment, and that would be the day two review assignment because that's always the closest one to um, what you're going to see for material on the test. Make sure that you send me a video with all of that completed by January 12th at 2.45 p.m. with all of that completed, no exceptions. Somebody tries to send me that stuff at 3 p.m., I'm gonna say, no, can't do that. We've been going through this retake process long enough now that there shouldn't be any excuses for missing deadlines. You know where this is located at. Make sure that you do that. And then at the very latest, this is all at the very latest here, the deadline for the retake is January 13th at 1.45 p.m. so that you would still have an hour to complete the test while I'm still at school in case anything should go wrong because Schoology obviously has been known to crash. So that is the process for the retakes for the test of sections 24 to 28 due by January 13th. 145 in the afternoon is the latest that you should be getting in contact with me for that retake. But the day before at 245 is when you get me all of the good stuff that you have finished.